Hola amigos, ¿qué tal? Stuart here from Spain Speaks with a Spain News update. And the first Spanish repatriation flight has arrived in Madrid from Afghanistan, but more about that in just a moment. Firstly, a big thanks to all of the people that left comments on the last video. Lots of comments, lots of debate happening there as usual. Thanks to people that supported the channel by buying merchandise, and a big thanks to my patrons on Patreon for your support. Now let's get into the news and the word repatriation dominating headlines today as Spain has managed to bring back some of the people that were stuck in Afghanistan. And as we can see here, the plane with the first Spanish returnees and Afghan collaborators arrives in Madrid. The armed forces A400 aircraft carrying the first group of Spanish evacuees and Afghan collaborators and their families landed at the military airbase in Torrejón de Ardoz, Madrid at 4.28 a.m. A total of 53 people have arrived on the flight, five Spaniards and the rest Afghans. The Minister of Foreign Affairs, José Manuel Álvarez, and the Minister of Inclusion, Social Security and Migration, José Luis Escrivá, received the contingent on the tarmac. After picking up the evacuees at Kabul airport, the aircraft took off from Dubai, United Arab Emirates, and after an eight-hour flight, arrived in Madrid. So, a total of 53 people on that flight, five Spaniards and the rest Afghan collaborators. And the question of just how many Afghans are going to come into the country is still unknown. As we can see here, Minister Escriva refuses to say how many Afghans will be evacuated by Spain. We have created an infrastructure for a few hundred, he said. With the first 53 Afghans evacuated by Spain already on Spanish soil, and a few hours before an interministerial meeting on the reception strategy takes place this afternoon, the Spanish Minister of Inclusion, Social Security and Migration, José Luis Escriva, has announced that Spain will also receive collaborators from all over the EU. We are not only receiving asylum seekers because of their collaboration with the Spanish authority, but Spain is also hosting all those Afghans who have collaborated with the EU and who will then be distributed proportionally among all the countries, Escriva said on Cadena Said. When asked about the specific number of people to be evacuated from Afghanistan in the face of the arrival of the Taliban, Escriva declined to commit himself to any figure. There are lists with different numbers and the feasibility of them coming or being able to come, he said. So the minister there not really clear on how many Afghan refugees are going to enter the country or where they're going to stay. Now, Catalonian independence is also making headlines today and apparently support for it among young people is falling. As we can see, support for Catalan independence falls among young people in Barcelona, according to survey. The fifth edition of the Barcelona Youth Survey, carried out in 2020, provides information on the living conditions, habits and values of young people aged between 15 and 34 in Barcelona. The report details that 34.4% of young people living in Barcelona believe that Catalonia should continue as an autonomous community of Spain because they believe that it is the best relationship. However, 32.9% believe that an independent state would be better, a figure that is lower than in 2015 when the percentage was around 38%. So support for an independent Catalonia falling among Barcelona youth. Now the topic of empty Spain or España Barciada is making headlines again as people in those rural areas of the country are losing more and more services on a daily basis. As we can see here, empty Spain rebels against bank branch closures. First it was schools, then doctors and pharmacies. Now it is the bank branches. The drain of services in rural Spain is unstoppable. Whether in Castilla, León, Galicia, Aragón or Andalusia, more and more mayors, institutions and citizens groups are becoming fed up with the situation that leaves certain sectors of the population, especially the elderly in rural areas with few resources, in what the Bank of Spain calls vulnerable access to cash. In Castilla y León, the region hardest hit by the shortage of banks and ATMs, Protests by local councils and platforms against depopulation are becoming increasingly common. Juan Carlos Palomar, spokesman for the Sodia Ya Collective, confesses that his neighbours are fed up. Every day they are closing more and more, he protests. So empty Spain rebelling that they are rapidly losing services like banks, pharmacies, schools and the like. And the Bank of Spain warning that people in those rural areas are vulnerable when it comes to having access to cash. So let's see if they can turn it around because it would be a shame to see empty villages in that part of the world. Now some people that are trying to make a go of it in rural Spain have fallen foul of the law because police have found their huge marijuana crop. As we can see, two macro plantations with 18,000 marijuana plants dismantled in Solsones, Lerida. On Tuesday, 
the Mossos de Esquadra dismantled two macro marijuana plantations with more than 18,000 plants that were hidden in the forest of Guichers in the Yeda region of Solsones. In the operation, the agents also arrested a total of eight men aged between 20 and 35 who are accused of a crime against public health, a crime of damage and membership of a criminal group. According to the police, they had deployed a system to steal water from the Yosa del Calval Reservoir by means of a pump. With it and through a drip irrigation system, they irrigated the plants. So eight men there in Catalonia showing some entrepreneurial spirit, but unfortunately on the wrong side of the law. Now, there's some good news on the health situation in Spain, and it is that hospital admissions are falling. As we can see, COVID hospital admissions in Spain fall below 9,000 for the first time since July. Coronavirus hospitalizations in Spain have fallen by more than 300 to the current 8,819, according to the latest daily update from the Ministry of Health. The proportion of occupied beds has fallen by three-tenths, the 7.53%. The communities with the highest number continue to be Madrid, 11.80%, and the Balearic Islands 10.49%. Now let's have a look at a summary of the health situation in Spain. We can see that the accumulated incidence countrywide is also on the way down. Daily cases are down 38% on previous data. As we just saw, some 8,819 people still hospitalized with COVID, and there are 1,861 COVID patients unfortunately still in ICU. If we have a look at Andalusia, we can see that the accumulated incidence rate there is now sitting at 414. Daily COVID cases are down 25% on previous data, but unfortunately daily deaths are up 71% on previous data. When it comes to the vaccination plan, we can see that just under 64% of the population have completed vaccination, and just under 74% have received at least one dose. Now the controversial subject of bullfighting is unfortunately again making headlines, as the Asturian city of Gijón puts an end to its bullfighting fair after the controversy over two bulls called Feminista and Nigeriano. Gijón City Council is putting an end to the traditional Begonia bullfighting fair, a decision that was already being considered, but which has been brought forward because in the last bullfight, two of the bulls were called Feminista and Nigeriano. The mayor, Ana González, has declared that she will not renew the contract for using animals to display an ideology contrary to human rights. A city that believes in the equality of women and men, that believes in integration, in doors open to everyone, cannot allow this type of thing. So another city council in Spain decided to scrap bullfighting festivities. And the reason was that one of the bulls was called feminist and the other Nigerian. Now let's have a look at some of the comments from previous videos. One here from MDC, I'm a new subscriber and a newbie living in Spain. This is an excellent resource. Thanks for taking the time and sharing. I'm also looking forward to reading some of the comments. MDC, thanks for the comment. Welcome to Spain and welcome to the channel and glad you like the videos. And that's what the objective of this channel is, to be a useful resource for people living in Spain or maybe people are considering a move to Spain and want to find out more about the country. That's why I started the channel, to talk about my experiences of living in Spain, some of the good things, some of the bad things. But unfortunately, some people use the comment section to push an agenda. But the comment section is what it is and it is a source of entertainment for some. One here from the Soul Home, Dear Stu, thanks so much for your effort and videos. As an Aussie who has her heart in Spain but is in lockdown in Canberra, your videos now more than ever keep me going. I look forward every day to your posts and it keeps the flame alive. I know where I'll be going as soon as borders open. Volver a la querida España. Yes, Soul Home, thanks for the comment. And I imagine that it must be tough for a lot of people down there in Australia at the moment. People in the ACT, like you. People in New South Wales. People in Victoria who are in lockdown at the moment. Tough times. The New South Wales situation is a little bit worrying. Things seem to be getting out of control in that part of Australia. And a lot of fingers being pointed and a lot of blame being thrown around. I think I mentioned a couple of weeks ago that a lot of Aussies living overseas are starting to get very, very frustrated with the situation, not being able to go home. And I imagine that there's also a lot of frustration in Australia because people can't travel. So let's do what we have to do, get the health situation under control and hopefully border will open up again soon. One here from Tobertine. Hi Stuart, I gave a wry smile when you commented on England being beaten in the home of cricket. Be it rugby, cricket or football, so many people from other countries love to see the English being defeated at sport. As an Englishman, I'm proud that others feel that way. If we weren't that good, no one will be bothered. Yeah, thanks for the comment. Good to see that you weren't offended by what I said the other day about England getting beaten in the cricket by India at Lords. I saw some people in the comment section say that they were offended by what I said. But it's just a bit of friendly banter, as you guys in the UK like to say. And let's be honest, it works both ways. 
One here from Ray, I would rather you didn't turn off comments. There are idiots everywhere. We just unfortunately have to live with it. But there are some fantastic, helpful people on here. Yeah, Ray, thanks for the comment. And you're right, there do seem to be a lot of clowns around at the moment. A group of people that think they know more about world events and what's going on than anybody else. They don't believe a word of what is said in the mainstream. They prefer to believe what's going on in the minor stream. And they're quite happy to share their erroneous opinions on social media platforms with the hope that somebody agrees with them. And you're right, we do need to look for the positives, and there are indeed some fantastic, helpful people leaving comments in the comment section. One here from Pam. Hi Stuart, we watch your updates every day and we think they are so interesting. We live near Rincón de la Victoria and we know you are coming here soon. It's a lovely part of Andalusia. Thank you for keeping us informed of what's going on. Keep it up, we so enjoy it. Yeah, Pam, thanks for the comment. I'm glad to see that you find the videos interesting. And you're right, Rincón de la Victoria is a wonderful part of Malaga. I actually prefer the east side of Malaga to the west side because it's not as crowded. There are some excellent places there to eat pescadito frito. And I am planning to visit that part of the country in the near future. So hopefully there won't be any more mobility restrictions in coming months. And finally, one here from Alan. Thanks, Stuart, for doing such a bang up job on your report. I'll be teaching for a year in Galicia beginning this fall and your videos are a valuable insight into the culture, politics and even the weather in Spain. Salud! Yeah, Alan, thanks for the comment and good luck with your teaching experience in that part of Spain, Galicia, another wonderful part of the country, another one of my favourite places in Spain. In fact, there's not too many places that I don't like in Spain, but Galicia is right up there, a great place to eat and drink. The only downside is the weather, so make sure you've got an umbrella. On that note, I'll wrap the video up. Questions and comments, please leave them in the section below. Debate the situation out as you normally do. Give it a thumbs up if you liked it, thumbs down if you didn't. I'll see you in the next one. Hasta luego.